Nice touch, Mike. Very nice. Uh, welcome. Thanks. All set, Brett? We are all set. Okay. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so start the meeting. Um, we just need a motion to accept the minutes of the regular meeting of February 14th. Accept an order filed the minutes of committee on special education for the listed dates. Accept an order filed the minutes of the committee of preschool special education for 221, 228, 3, 3. Do we have so, a motion? So moved. So Second. moved by Amanda. Seconded by... Mike, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Let me see. Do we have, well, public comments? We really don't have anything tonight or put it out there for public comments. Um, so we'll move into our committee reports. We just need a motion for the special meeting. Okay. For March 8th. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a motion to, to <coughs> Yep. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting on March 8th? So moved. Okay. So moved by Crystal, seconded by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That carries. So that moves us to our committee um, personnel. Vince, can you have that, Mr. Canini? No, Vince. Is Vince, Vince is here. made it on yet. Okay. Uh, so I can, I can go through or we can wait and push that to the end and see if he is able to get on. Um, we can push it on unless you feel comfortable going through it real quick. I mean, yeah. we could push it on for events. Yeah, let's push it on. And if he doesn't come on, I'll do it. Um, I'll do it later on in the agenda. Okay. Uh, we'll move to athletics then for Mike. All righty. I'm going to be switching to my other screen, so I won't be able to see anybody raising a hand for a question. So if you have something, just speak up. All right. To start with uh, some winter sport recaps. Um Sad to announce that Mike Pendergrass is going to be resigning from his position as head wrestling coach. Mike's been our coach for 12 years. We'd like to thank him for his commitment and dedication to the program and what he has done to help continue the tradition and success of Hudson Falls wrestling. Thanks, Mike. I second that. Uh, also want to offer up congratulations to our winter athletes who were named to the Foothills Council All-Star teams in their respective sports. I have a list down here. I'll go through those. Uh, relatively quickly. All right. So for boys basketball, Peyton Smith was named Foothills Council MVP. Girls basketball, Seneca Williamson was named first team. Wrestling, Jesse Mullis and Colin Diffie, both named to the first team. We have Justin Mullis, Levi Wilson, Darius, and Darius, I, I apologize. I'm not going to be able to pronounce your last name. Um, Dom Doyle. Logan Staunton, all named for the second team. And for bowling, we had Braden Wells to the first team, Atreyu Wallach to the second team, uh, as well as Cody Edwards. And for boys swimming and diving, uh, Richard Rosick received an honorable mention. Competitive cheer, uh, it looks like Natalie or Natalia Fuller and Angelina King were both named to the second team. So congratulations to all of our winter athletes. It's a great accomplishment. Um, also, uh, we're happy to announce that we had some of our winter teams recognized by NYSPHSAA Scholar Athlete Teams. Uh, to earn this 
recognition, they have to have 75% of the team roster with a GPA of 90 or higher. And this year, our boys basketball team, our girls basketball team, competitive cheer, and unified bowling all receive those honors. All right, we have two student athletes who have been selected to attend the first ever New York State Public High School Athletic Association Student Leadership Conference, uh, which will be March 30th. Congratulations to Jesse Mullis and Abby Bigelow. Jesse is a junior standout football player and wrestler, uh, both of which he is the team captain for. He's also attending Early College Career Academy for Business and Entrepreneurship at SUNY Adirondack. Abby is a three-sport varsity athlete and was selected as captain of the volleyball team this year as a sophomore and helped them reach the Section 2 finals. Uh, both students are going to be great representatives for Hudson Falls. We congratulate both of them. All right, spring. This is the first week that JV and varsity practices for spring sports have begun. Modified practice is going to begin Monday, April 3rd. There's still time to get the kids registered for modified sports on the family ID through our district website if you haven't done so. And on to a big topic for us tonight, uh, some merger news. So we have merger applications for the fall 2023 season. Uh, we need to complete these and submit them to Section 2 by April 1st in order for these to happen. The first one is going to be a renewal merger with Southlands Falls Central School District for girls varsity swimming and diving in the fall. And the second is establishing a new merger with Fort Edward Union Free School District for football and game day cheer. And I believe both those items we're going to have to uh, make some action on. Okay. So regarding the two um, resolutions, you heard the recommendation from Mike. Um, anybody have any questions pertaining to the merger for swimming? Okay. So be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District agrees to the merger with Southlands Falls for swim and diving at the modified and varsity level for the 2023-24 school year. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved. So moved by Amanda, seconded by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, that carries. And for the second recommendation, uh, be it resolved, the Board of, Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approves the following mergers for all levels for the 2023-24 school year. Approval of the following mergers with Fort Edward Central School District for football and game day cheer. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved by Mike, seconded by? Second. Amanda, all in favor? Hold on one second. Uh, one, oh. one, one slight change to that motion. It's just Fort Edward UFSD, Union <coughs> Free School District, not CSD. My, my apologies on that. Okay. Certainly should have saw that before now. So with the correction for the USD. You got it, UFSD. USFD? UFSD, Union Free School District. UFSD, yep. <laughs> there it is. Third time's a charm. <laughs> Union Free School District. Okay, so that carries. <clears throat> okay, any other questions for athletics? Okay, perfect. That moves us to audit, Ms. Grimaldi. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so I'll start with the treasurer's report. Um, this is for the month of January. In our general fund, we had $3.7 million to start with 5.9 in receipts and 5.2 in disbursements, leaving us a balance in the general fund of $4.3 million, um, which puts us in a good position, and then a total cash on hand of $8.5 million. Um, did anyone have any questions on the treasurer's report? No? Okay. Um, and then on the extracurricular accounts, uh, accounts, there was um, just some normal activity. There was nothing too significant. This is also for the month of January. Um, just kind of the normal in and out stuff for this time of year. So nothing too significant. Um, that detail is also in for docs if you have any questions. And then the monthly bills were also in for docs. Um, did anyone have any questions on those? 
Okay. Um, and then, so I will let Kevin do, uh, Kevin, is Kevin on? Yes. Okay. So I'll let Kevin do an update um, on on budget. And then we also do have in, um, in our packets the um, notice to the annual school district meeting and election um, that needs to be posted um, that we have to make approval of tonight as well. And we do this every year just to give notice of what the um, propositions will be on the budget and, um, and the Board of Education seats that will be vacant um, or up for renewal. And then um, some stuff about buses as well. So that's also in there that we will have to make approval for this evening. Um, do you want to do the budget first before we do approvals, Kevin? Sure. Um, we met last week. Uh, the the audit committee. Uh, we reviewed. We, we we reviewed some items in our but in the budget. Um, basically, what we did is kind of um, went back through um, different things that we had talked about the month before. We're, currently, we're sitting in a good spot with budget. Uh, we're waiting for the governor and the legislators uh, to come together on an agreement in the budget, which should take place somewhere around April 1st, which I believe is a Sunday this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dan. I think we talked about that. Um, so we'll be looking probably, it'll either take place on Friday um, the 30th or on Monday the 2nd. Uh, but right now, um, we've we're sitting in a good spot. We've, we've basically got a balanced budget. Uh, we just have to make a few tweaks to it, depending on how the state aid comes in. Um, but a couple of notes that we discussed on the state aid is under the foundation aid, um, we did receive a large increase in, in foundation aid, um, which again, as we've noted many times, has been, been owed to the district for many years. But there is a $500,000 set aside, uh, which I know it's currently being lobbied to get that into the foundation aid versus having it as a set aside uh, for designated designated causes. So um, we're waiting to watch that carefully. The other thing is, is with our building project um, and when our construction contracts were signed, uh, we it falls under what's called chapter 97 of, of the building aid laws, which basically has to do with the timing of when contracts were signed. So our building aid um, currently is not um, for the new project is not showing up, even though we will be getting a, a piece of building aid uh, in the next, in, uh, in 23, 24. And we also discussed the, uh, how critical it is for us to get final cost reports in uh, on this capital project before December 31st, because that'll be a difference in building aid, whether we get a full year's payment or a half year's payment uh, in that year. So um, we went through all of these. Um, we, we, we discussed the different items that we have. We discussed the different propositions um, <clears throat> that, that we have in the um, budget. And we also discussed um, the property tax cap calculation, which we have to do each year. Um, our cap is 4.15%. Uh, so we could go up to that without getting a super majority vote. Um, that's based on the carryover that we've had from year to year over the past couple of years, because the last two years we've gone out with a zero on the tax levy. So it allows you to carry some of the money over that you could have used in those previous years. Um, so that's the calculation. So um, basically we're going to be um, at, at the next meeting, we're going to be finalizing everything. Uh, we're looking at tax levies things like that, um, and, and all the pieces should fit together. But like I said, we're in a we're in a good spot right now moving forward with budget. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, one of the things I just wanted to highlight on the, um, that I wanted to highlight on the, the, with the propositions was the energy performance contract. Is that getting approved in here or is that in buildings and grounds? Buildings grounds. Okay, I thought so. So that's just that's part of the proposition that we're also approving for this um, notice that is going going out to the public. That's all. Uh, I think that's all I had. Jeff, did you want to do the approvals of treasurer's report and then also of the? Um, Legal. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, anybody have any questions pertaining to the audit committee report? Okay, so at this point in time, we just need a motion to approve the January 2023 Treasurer's Report. So moved. Okay, so moved by Mike, seconded by? Second. Vince, there you go. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
that carries. The second resolution uh, is regarding the budget vote legal ad, which um, includes the annual uh, school district meeting and election notice. Um, so be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approves the 2023-24 legal ad. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved by Crystal, seconded by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. One thing before you jump to transportation. Um, with the timing of spring break this year being the second week of April, we um, scheduled our board meeting for the first week in April. Um, and Kevin's right. Uh, the, the first falls actually on a Saturday, which gives the governor until Monday the 3rd for that budget to be released, which means um, if there is a lot of change in what comes out at the end, the final approved budget, um, he may have some tweaking to do. And we, he will do his very, very best to have it done for the 4th. But if not, we may need to have a special meeting, but we won't know until that time comes. So I just want to put that on the radar. And uh, Kevin, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's what I, what you and I had discussed. That's, that's, that's exactly right. Depending, depending on if it, if it comes right on time on the first, which they used to try to get it done like midnight the night before. Um, so, so they could, you know, we we're going to have to do some tweaking, but we should have time because they'll give me basically two days to do it, to get that done. But if it falls into Tuesday and stuff like that, we may not be able to, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to make a decision on Monday um, on that, the end and on whether we'll be able to go forward with it Tuesday or we'll have to wait till a special meeting. Yeah. And, and that special meeting would have to be relatively quickly thereafter so we can get everything for our budget newsletter and all the other notices that have to go out. Again, just giving everybody a heads up ahead of time. Okay. That moves us to transportation. Dr. Steele. Turn your mic on, Brian. There, that's better. Um, okay, you can read the DOT report there. The trip report is right there as well. The big news with the transportation department this month is we've actually hired another uh, driver. He's going through his training, and um, I guess we're going to use him as a substitute bus driver once he passes that. Um, a little update on our, our buses from last year. The 66 passenger bus that we ordered last fall looks like it may be en route, needs to be inspected, and hopefully we'll be at our facilities soon. Um, and we also ordered two other uh, Chevy 28 passenger buses from last year. They should be here this fall for um, next fall for the upcoming school year. So um, pretty short report this year that or this this month. That's it. OK, anybody have any questions regarding transportation? All right. That moves us to building guns, building new ground, Mr. Gallo. Thank you, Jeff. I'm going to jump around here a little bit um, as, as far as the order goes here. First on the capital project, um, and and I know this very much pleased Mr. Ward and Mr. Polensi. No new no found conditions, so uh, no no surprises. That's great news. And everything else is is going according to plan and pretty much on target. So I think that's uh, that's good news as well, and, and we're moving forward on it. Um, next item. Uh, the annual pesticide resolution that we uh, we pass annually uh, for the lawn care as well as the notification. Um, any questions on that from the board? Okay. And uh, Jeff will ask for a motion on that in, in a minute. And then the final uh, item is the EPC. And I'm going to defer to Dan and Kevin to go into a little bit more detail on that. There is some, uh, a couple spreadsheets in your packet. I'm sure you've taken a look at that. Um, and uh, they can explain a little bit more in detail on the whole project and the timing and the status of it. Yeah. Kevin, you want me to go first? Lead us off. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so you can see in the spreadsheets, uh, a, a lot of calculations there. Basically, it's showing you the total value of the project. It also talks to the number of years that it takes for that each individual line of that spreadsheet, that part of the project, to repay the district. And 
the, the basic information that you'd want to see is when you get down to the bottom, it has to be under a certain number of years. Uh, we made it under a certain number of years. A couple of things that might stick out to you when you look at it line by line by line, um, and especially if you look at it and see that one item that's got the green line across there, that's the boilers in the boiler room. And if you go across to the right-hand right hand column, you'll see that it takes something like 70, I don't have it open because I'm trying to look at the camera, 70 point something years um, for the boiler project piece to be paid off. Um, as you're aware, we had to cut the boiler project out of our regular capital project. We were able to capture it in here. Um, and it is allowable. It is an appropriate um, use of this type of project. And because of all the other work we're able to do, that is paid back in much less than the required number of years. Um, the average comes out below what we need it to be. So it comes out below the 18 year payback. So it's an allowable project. It lets us capture a lot of the work that we had to cut out of our capital project due to the price escalation that we saw when we went out for our first bid. Um, we continued to see when we put out our second bid. Um, so I really want to uh, pat the Buildings and Grounds Committee on the back and thank them for allowing us to look at in the in entire board for allowing us to look at a couple of different ways to to capture that work and and get it done for the district. Uh, so that comes in cost neutral for the district after the energy savings. The two resolutions that are um, in front of the board tonight, one is to approve moving forward with the project itself. Uh, so the project can move forward. The project does not require voter approval. The project requires board approval. But the second proposition in front of you tonight in this section of our meeting is to go and put um, this in front of the public on our budget vote date, asking them for permission to go forward. And uh, and if they give us permission to go forward to seek the extra 10% or um, almost 10% aid, depending on how the project finally books out. Uh, so that's what the public will be voting on, uh, not to stop the project, not to stop it at all, but to allow us to go and get an additional 10% of New York State building aid on the project. Uh, so the project is, is, is debt neutral for us, even if the public were to say no to us going out and trying to get the additional state aid when May, uh, I think it's May 18th this year, I think is the budget vote, 16th, uh, May 16th. Uh, so, so that's just want to be aware of the difference. The first one is for us to go forward with the project. That means the project is going to happen either way with those cost numbers in front of you. The second is to put it out to the public to get that, to try to capture that additional 10% aid. And as I always say, um, those are New York State tax dollars. I understand that completely. So why not bring those New York State tax dollars back to Hudson Falls, back to our school district? So you'll hear me say that a few more times at least um, in my time at Hudson Falls, probably a lot more times than you want to hear that, likely. Kevin, what I what I miss or what other information do you think is important for folks to have? Uh, Dan, I think you I think you covered it all. Um, you know, one of the reasons um, just to reiterate something that Dan said that with an EPC, it, there doesn't need to be voter approval um, to go forward and do the work. And it's based on the concept that the energy performance savings pays for the project. That's why we don't have to have voter approval just to move forward with the project. But however, to get the additional 10% made, that's where you need the voter approval. So just to reiterate that, um, I think you covered everything else well, Dan. I'm going to, I'm going to say one more thing one time. Uh, it's important for me to say again that the majority of the work that we're capturing in the EPC is work that the voters did approve to be included in our capital project. We just couldn't do it because of the costs. So the voters were good with the work back when they voted on that project. Um, we're just finding a different way to do it. Because I always uh, I want to be careful when we say we don't need voter approval to move ahead, which is completely true. In this case, we had voter approval for the work. We just didn't have enough money inside of our capital project to move forward without running it through this EPC. And one last point too, um, we, we talked about the public education piece to make sure everybody understands what this program is all about. And again, anytime that the savings are not met, it's not covered by us, it's covered by the contractor. So there's, there's, um, there's not a lot of downside to this because if they did their calculations incorrectly and the energy costs, uh, or I should say the energy savings are not there, it is not out of our pocket, it's out of their pocket. 
And, and I think, again, that that's going to be a real key component to the education piece for, for the public before this goes for the vote. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I can't believe I forgot to say that, Mark. So thank you. Okay. Is that, uh, all, we're all set with that, Mark? We can get the resolutions uh, taken care of? Yeah, we got the three resolutions, too, by the project, and then the one for the pesticide. Okay. So the first one we'll do is the pesticide. So be resolved, the Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approves the 2023 pesticide application and long program submitted by Dave McKeegan. Do we have a motion? So moved. So, so moved second. by Mark, seconded by Crystal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. So the other two um, are regarding the EPC. Uh, be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approved moving forward with the energy performance contract submitted by Danforth and reviewed by March Associates. Do we have a, a motion? So moved. So moved by Crystal, seconded by Second. Mike. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. So the last resolution, be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approves the district to seek the additional New York State aid, potentially 10% available for the energy performance contract by seeking voter approval at our scheduled May 16th, 2023 vote. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved by Crystal, seconded by? Second. Mark, all in favor? Aye. 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 That carries. Opposed? That carries. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions for buildings and grounds? All right. We move on to policy. Amanda? Okay. Policy committee did not actually meet this month because we only had one item on the agenda and it was a second read. Nobody had any questions about it. So you can all see right there is policy 8450, home hospital or institutional instruction. And it basically just expands on a current policy so that it's updated to match state ed regulations. It adds some definitions and requires us to provide homebounds like hospital, for example, instruction and set up procedures for doing so. So does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, that's okay. all I have. Did we do a motion to approve the second read? So moved. Okay. So that would be for policy 8450, um, approved by Crystal, seconded by? Second. Amanda, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And last but not least, no, actually, we got to go back to personnel a little bit, but for advocacy, um, Heidi? Okay, I don't have much for you. We uh, met, Dan and I went to the ASBA meeting on February 16th, which was about um, <clears throat> legal matters before boards of education. Um, some of the highlights of that conversation was um, managing public comments, what's appropriate for executive sessions, when to meet um, with your lawyer, um, filling short and long-term vacancies on the board, um, changing mascots, which has become locally relevant, but thankfully not to us. Um, and um, their next meeting is on March 23rd, and I believe our kids are the musical guests, and I'm very upset because my own son is playing, and I won't be there. So cheer them on. Take some video for me. Um and then I just want to put in a plug for Lynn King, the president of ASBA. There's a steering committee meeting coming up on June 1st, and they're looking for participants to that. So if anybody has the time or compunction, um, that would be great. And then I wasn't sure, Dan, if you wanted to talk a little bit about your lobbying efforts this past week down in Albany. Yep. I would love to. Uh, give me one second. Uh, so, yeah, we spent a full day, uh, the Wish We Advocacy team, down um, in Albany on March 9th. It's our first set of in-person meetings uh, since before the pandemic. So we were able to meet with uh, several senators, and I'll, I'll go through the, the, the list really quickly. Uh, Mark Walzak, 
Dan Stack, Robert Smullen, um, Assemblyman Simpson, uh, Senator Jake Ashby, Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh, Assemblyman Scott Bendat, and Senator Jim Tesco, and last but not least, Assemblywoman Carrie Warner. Um, so it was a good day. Uh, we spent our time talking about a few a few specific talking points, which you guys have heard about several times. First being foundation aid, um, and certainly uh, you know from what Kevin has said about where we're looking in our budget this year that um, our work in advocating for foundation aid over the last few years um, has been answered, especially for Hudson Falls in the last two years. Uh, so that was our main talk, our number one talking point. We also spoke again about increasing uh, state support for career and technical education. Um, and you've heard everyone talk about that a little bit. Uh, universal free meals for all students. Uh, so again, I'm working for the greater good, uh, not just for Hudson Falls on that committee. Uh, as you all know, our students have community eligibility. So all of our students in Hudson Falls do get free breakfast and lunch already. Um, but other school districts during the pandemic, um, due to funds provided by the federal government, we're allowed to also have free breakfast and lunch. So we're advocating that New York State continue to do that for all students in New York State. Um, and that's that's picked up a lot of traction as well. Um, we also spent uh, quite a bit of time talking about workforce shortages and some of the things that we're asking the legislator to help us to um, is, is give us some flexibility on certification, help us get some more pathways for reciprocity from neighboring and even farther away states uh, and we, we had a, a short conversation about the civil service system as well. So it was a great day um, and you run all day long. It was nice to be back in the Capitol. Uh, so I appreciate the board supporting me being a part of that committee. Absolutely. We appreciate you going on there and advocating for us too, Dan. Is that That's it, Heidi? Ahead. That is it for advocacy. Okay. So there's nothing to resolutions on that. So we'll move back to personnel. Mr. Canady. Sorry, I missed the beginning. I was on the other link. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Um, personnel is pretty routine this month. Uh, they're starting to get ahead or ahead of the curve for summer school appointments. And uh, there are a few tenure appointments, two of them actually. James Murray, Director of Nutrition, Nutrition Services. Effective 7-3, and Mike DiCaprio, Assistant Superintendent of Education Accountability, Effective 7-15-2023. And the other highlight I would say would be that uh, Arthur Corlew, Chip, will be with us next year. Great so, news. Other than that, there's nothing that's out of the ordinary. Okay. So, Dan, there's no active uh, resolutions for personnel, correct? Well, you you um, would want to approve all of all of the items in the personnel agenda by okay. consent, Jeff. Yep. So, does anybody have any questions regarding personnel? If not, on motion by consent, the board approves the personnel agenda. So moved. Okay. That uh, moves us to new business, and we have three items uh, to discuss on that. Um, the first one would be um, for Chief uh, Earl McDuff. Uh, there is a resolution to approve uh, the creation of an annual perpetual $500 scholarship named uh, the Chief Award in memory of Earl uh, Chief McDuff Jr. And the um, acronym for Chief would be C for considerate, uh, H for helpful, I for invaluable, E for essential, and F for friendly. Um, if we all know Chief, uh, that fits him to a T. Um, he served 30 years um, with our district, uh, approximately 30 years with the district. Um, I think uh, whoever's awarded this, uh, it was uh, it's a it's a really good scholarship. Um, I I feel that it, um, you know, to get an additional one with Chief. Unfortunately, we lost Chief uh, a month or so, a month or so ago, and um, you know it's um, it's a great um, scholarship to have. So. Um, anybody have any questions regarding that? Okay, so be resolved. The Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approves the creation of the annual perpetual $500 scholarship named the Chief Award in memory of Earl J. Chief McDuff Jr. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved. 
Okay, so moved by Crystal, seconded by Mike, I believe. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. The second scholarship uh, request is a um, annual one for the David H. Roselle Scholarship. If you had a chance to read the scholarship details on that. Um, Mr. Ward, I can read it for you because it's identified to you, but um, it's coming from Lisa Mitzen Roselle. And she's writing, I am writing to request and establish a scholarship in the name of my late father, David H. Roselle. My dad passed away in December of 2021 after a brave fire battle with Alzheimer's disease. He graduated from Hudson Falls High School in 1960 and was honored on the Wall of Distinction in 2006. After marrying my mom, Darlene, they bought a home in Hudson Falls where they lived for 48 years. They raised three daughters, all graduating from Hudson Falls High School. Uh, Amy, 1985, Lisa, 86, and Catherine, in 95. I was honored on the Wall of Distinction and myself in 2019. Dad was a huge proponent of education. He worked for more than three decades for BOCES as an assistant superintendent and continued to do the same consulting work at the Albany BOCES following his retirement. Mom and Dad insisted their daughters pursue higher education. We were all fortunate to graduate from, SUN from a SUNY school. He also had a great love for Hudson Falls, having lived there for most of his life. Even toward the end of his illness, he always remembered and talked fondly about his hometown. It would be a wonderful for my mom, family, for my family to honor him in that in this way. The following outlines we would like to establish in his memory. Down here, um, it states that uh, given annually to a graduating senior, three thousand dollars would be directed to the family student from our family. We would like the scholarship to be granted with the following criteria. A student that plans to attend a SUNY school, a student interested in studying business, accounting, or finance, a student that displays kindness with their peers and community. The scholarship recipient will be chosen by our family, the donors. Um, and that is um, written by Lisa Roselle Mitzen. Does anybody have any qu questions pertaining to this request? I just had one just looking at it. When it says the recipient's going to be chosen by the family or the donors, are they like given a list from the guidance counselor counselors of kids who are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so normally that's what would happen with folks who are asking to participate in the choosing. Um, they, they would get a list of folks that meet the criteria and then choose from that or, or ask um, for, for a specific list from the guidance office. Okay. Great. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Hudson Falls Central School District approves the creation of the annual $3,000 scholarship named the David H. Roselle Scholarship. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved by, I think it was Heidi. Amanda. Not sure. Amanda. <laughs> Seconded by, Second. by Vince. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? <clears throat> that carries. All right. So the last item um, is a donation uh, that is that was submitted by um, David Yur, who's the club president for the Adirondack Car Enthusiast. Uh, the letter that was submitted states, Dear Local School Representatives, on behalf of the Ace Car Club, we are delighted to offer you this $500 donation to be used by the prior arranged group um, of your choice. Thank you for your patience. Our original goal was to get the donations out uh, this fall, but unfortunately our club president fell seriously ill. He has made a quick recovery and we are back on track. Our club ran two car shows this past summer and raised $5,000, which we decided to break into $500 donations to 10 area school districts. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication to our community. Sincerely, David, your club president of the Adirondack Car Enthusiast. Kevin, just a quick question. Like um, when they say the arranged, who would who would that go to, or have you considered where that money would go to? Yep, I I can speak Dan? to it if you want. Sure. Yeah. So my understanding is is that money was earmarked for the intermediate school. I know Mr. McTagg had conversations with members of the uh, the Adirondack Car Enthusiasts Club. So that that's that's where that's being earmarked for. And Kevin, go ahead. 
Yeah, it's so basically um, what we will do is we take the donation, we will put it in our general fund, but we earmark that money. So then when, when the school comes to us and says, this is what we want to do, we want to do this with that money, it's automatically sent that way. So it's, it is reserved. Uh, it goes into our general fund, but it's reserved. Perfect. Okay. Anybody have any questions pertaining to the donation by ACE? Okay, so be it resolved, the Board of Education for the Hudson Falls Central School District accepts the $500 donation from the Adirondack Car Enthusiast. Do we have a motion? So, so moved. So moved by Crystal, seconded by Amanda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. So, Mr. Ward, Superintendent's Report. Yeah, so thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, so item one on my superintendent's report was the course catalog. So what I'm going to do with that is, is mention it, and I'm going to tell you that you're going to see it next month because uh, I really want you to see it and lay your hands on it. Um, I want to thank the high school counselors along with uh, Mike DiCaprio, Chris McPherson, and our public communication team. So um, Brett and then uh, DJ, who we work with from Cap Region BOCES, an awful lot of work went into making a really professional looking course catalog for our school district. It's something that we haven't had um, either in a long time or ever. Uh, so I'll give Mike a few seconds to comment on that. But I, I want to show it to you uh, next month. It's really worth having in your hands um, to see. Mike, anything to add on that that I might have missed? Uh, I don't know that we had one prior i know that they've been working off of a google doc which the benefit of that is you can edit it on the fly every year um it really came out ex excellent it's commensurate with the presentation we're trying to to make for who we are and um it, it came out great there's student spotlights in there there's a worksheet in there for the eighth graders uh as they rise to ninth grade um the graphics that describe some of our departments and the pathways to different uh, diplomas. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yes. So you'll, you'll get to see it and we'll speak about it briefly again uh, next month. Um, but, I, but I just can't be more proud of the work that it's, it's a, it's a professional document. It's a real deal. So, so kudos to everybody who worked on that. Excellent. Uh, going back, uh, Heidi mentioned at our area school board association, March 23rd, um, that's the next session, and it is the Hudson Falls Chamber Orchestra that will be there. Uh, if you would like to go, please let Kelly know so she can RSVP. Uh, I will absolutely be there. Uh, if Heidi's not going or has a conflict, that means I need a, a new dinner partner. So I'm hoping that somebody wants to come out and hear the Chamber Orchestra. Uh, and it's a good group. It's the group that, uh, that I moderated last year. I am not moderating this year. Uh, but the gentleman from the school boards association, the gentleman from NISCUS, and um, oh my goodness, I forget who the third, but the three that are going to talk about school budgets and finance. So it's really worth getting out there tonight just to support our kids and see our kids. But the content for the meeting is going to be great, and the, the food isn't bad either. Uh, moving down, uh, musical theater event. This is the, a lot of credit to be given to Diane Havern. Um, and the music department. Uh, met with her <laughs> last year towards the end of the school year and then a few times at the beginning of this school year talking about having to have something for our kids who normally participate in the musical for them to do this year. We didn't want it to be a case where there was nothing for them and then they don't come back. Uh, so that event that's, that's listed um, in your agenda there, you can click on the link and see. But it's an evening of musical theater and it's gonna be at the Strand and it's March 30th, and she has, um, as it says on the flyer, 21 students in grades 7 through 12 um, doing some songs from different plays. And you can see the list on that flyer as well. Uh, as you know, the Strand seats uh, several people fewer than our auditorium does. So seating will be a premium. Uh, I think it would be great if the board was represented. Uh, but we are trying to prioritize letting the parents of the kids get in there to see their kids. But it would be great to really jam pack that place on that night. Um, and knowing that we're going to have a brand new auditorium next year, I really commend Diane on the work that she did. She reached out to the kids, found out what they wanted to do because we had, we had thrown a few different ideas around to keep the kids involved. 
um, during this gap year where we just don't have that auditorium. So kudos to her. And uh, if you get out to see that event, um, I I'll be there. But I, I hope that some of you get to get out there. Maybe some of your kids are even in it. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the, the list of student participants. Uh, going down, uh, the 23-24 Wish We Both Sees fiscal plan, uh, need to get that to you. That is uh, one of the items you vote on uh, on April 25th, which is the required BOCES budget and board member vote. That's a statutory date that all school districts have to meet on. Uh, so that's on there, and we need to have a little discussion. Uh, Kelly and I had put that on our schedule for 8 a.m., uh, but that was prior to uh, virtual meetings no longer being allowed unless you have a state of emergency. And we're certainly hoping we don't have a state of emergency on April 25th like we do this evening. So I want to open it up just for a second to see if if 8 a.m. makes sense or if 6 a.m. makes sense or if 6 p.m. makes sense. We have to have a quorum on that day to vote on that BOCES budget. So I don't know if people have their calendars that far ahead, uh, but if, if we can get some opinions on what might work, that would be fantastic. It's about five minutes, the whole meeting. Yeah. Dan, what date was that again? It's uh, April 25th. Okay. 8 a.m. is usually a fine time for me. I could do that as well. 8 a.m. I can also. I, gets me I will do my best. <laughs> Be there. Where I do we do meet for something like that? We do it right in my office. We would do it right in my office unless Kelly tells me that's not what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> um, no, it's it's a quick meeting. It's five to ten minutes. There's those two resolutions. You vote on the budget and the board members, um, and, then, and then you're done. There'd be no other business that day unless there's something that pops up that's emergency business we'd have to do. I think that gave us four. I, I heard the three ladies said they could make it. Uh, I'll I'll do my best to be there, Dean. I shouldn't. It shouldn't be a problem. For events. I have an eye doctor appointment in Granville on at eight o'clock. Sorry. Oh, boy, you're usually the one I count on, the, the retired <laughs> gentleman. I can't make it. I've I've work at that point. Yeah. If we go earlier, if we go seven thirty, does that help anybody? Does that get us to five? Five I can make that. Seven thirty would be a hundred percent better for me. So yep. how about it, ladies? That that's fine with me. If I can get my people out of the house and to school. I was just going to say there's going to be some bribery involved here, I think. Yes. yes. All right. So, Kelly, we'll change that posting for that for 730. And we'll designate the, the um, location as the district office, superintendent's office. Okay. And if something changes and we don't have a quorum in the morning, we got to meet sometime during that day. So. Um, we might be doing a 7 p.m. thing for five minutes, but I, I think we can get it done in the morning. All right. Awesome. Okay. And I have one um, one last item. So just a quick update on strategic planning. Uh, so I just wanted to take a look at the timeline of that. So the strategic planning, as as board members who were on the board last year know, um, was, was one of the goals of the board was to have a strategic plan in place we, we didn't get to that work last year and there was plenty to do last year. We were focused on having our kids in school and being open and uh, we did that successfully. So that work carries on. Um, the board's been getting uh, updates weekly uh, on progress uh, since November 11th. And uh, we did talk about that with our administrative cabinet in the months of uh, December and January. And on February 15th, uh, it was it was released out to the school community through the DSDMT, the District Shared Decision Making Team. During that meeting, the information was provided that we were moving forward with a consultant to do that work. And then just last Friday, we did the public um, whole school community announcement of that information. So, uh, and, and many of you have had uh, your interviews. So they've interviewed the board and um, some of the admin, if not all of the admin. Next will be uh, the rest of the faculty and staff. It includes uh, surveying of the entire faculty and staff. And then it does students from grades uh, four through 12, and then parents um, after that. So I am 
not part of the developing of the questions and that's on purpose so you that you folks can speak openly and candidly and so can everybody who answers the survey or who speaks directly with the consultant through a focus group um, or a focus phone interview so i just wanted to give that update uh in the end uh, what i will get to see is a report once the information has been gathered uh, but that's on purpose so that um, i'm not steering that plan um, and so we got, the, we, we had the data and the feedback from all the, all the groups. And then it'll be a collaborative operation after that between the board and the superintendent, as well as um, our faculty and staff and other stakeholders. So um, there's going to be a lot of work. It's going to happen quickly. But we've been talking, the board was talking about it, I think, prior to even hiring me because it was in those 21, 22 goals, uh, which were, were being completed about the time that you were first meeting me um, as the superintendent. Any, I don't know if there's any questions or anything else that uh, folks uh, need to hear about the strategic planning. Happy to answer them. Um, Dan, just one quick question on that. How did you happen to um, choose the uh, third party organization that you guys did? And um, just from our conversations, they obviously specialize in this type of thing. Uh, will our data be published inclusive of a larger research study they're doing or? Um... No, so, so my understanding of that when it comes out, that, 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 that um, report is for us it's not part of a larger uh, body of research, um, although I would be open to it being compared to a larger body of research because mm -hmm. that that makes sense. That I think that's good information for all of us to have how we compare it to what other what other people are doing as far as initiatives and strategic planning. Uh, so the process really started rolling for us this fall. Um, I was able to uh, to meet a couple of consultants and then came back and had a conversation with Kevin and Mike about a few. And then we sat and met with two uh, different consulting firms, one from one uh, that's that's local and and then uh, the one that's from a little bit farther away. In the end, through the two presentations and interviews, uh, it, it became very clear that there was one that was uh, ready to do the work right away and, and one that was um, hadn't done as much of this work kind of in the fashion that we were looking for. Uh, so that's that's that was the main factor that separated the two when we came down to the final decision on that. Okay, thank you so much. You got it. I'm good, Jeff. You all set? I am. Okay. I just had one thing um, to put out. Uh, we did um, meet in, uh, an executive session last week. Um, we're going to table that. We're going to need. Um, and this is pertaining to a, a contract issue with uh, Mr. Ward's contract. Um, I think we're going to have a need to meet uh, as soon as possible so we can discuss it further. Um, and um, I did talk with Dan about that and um, I want to get that taken care of as soon as possible. So if we can come up with a date um, in the next few days or maybe next week uh, that we can discuss that so we can be in tune to um, our discussion in an executive session. So um, we'll, we'll communicate via email or however we're going to do it uh, just to see if we can come up with a date to finalize um, that discussion and get that taken care of. Okay, that's, that's all I have at this point in time. Does anybody have any other questions? Yeah. Mr. Ward, you're all set with your report? I am, but I want to say um, one thing that, that uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say it. Um, I just want to congratulate uh, both Jim Murray and Mike DiCaprio, um, tenure is, 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 is quite an accomplishment. So I want to thank them for their work and let them both know. I know Mike's on here. I'm not sure if Jim is or not. He may not be. Um, but I want to let them know that I appreciate the work. The district appreciates your work. And we look forward to a long and fruitful relationship. Uh, so this is just the beginning. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the end of anything. It's the beginning. Um, of, of a lot of great work that we're going to do together. So congratulations to both of you, both Mike and to Jim. Congratulations, Mike. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Now I really am done, Jeff. So we do not have a need for executive session. That's correct, right, Mr. Ward? 
Okay. And that concludes our board meeting for today. Um, do we have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. So moved by Vince, seconded by... Second. It's so tough to... Mike, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, have a great night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night everybody. Good night. Good night.